Holy sh**. AMD's gone and done it, apparently. Not many of us in the tech industry, I'll admit, saw this coming. We thought the RX 6900 XT, whatever placeholder that would have been, would have competed with the likes of the RTX 3080. Apparently that's what the 6800 XT already does. The 6900 XT competes with the BF GPU that is the RTX 3090. Who, who would have seen that coming? The Vengeance A4100 is Corsair's latest take on a professional gaming and streaming machine packing a Ryzen 7 3700X and NVIDIA RTX 2080 series graphics. Enjoy among the finest Corsair components, including an RM750 80 Plus Gold power supply and Vengeance DDR4 memory, along with tasteful, I'll say, RGB integration. Oh, and did I mention the included Elgato 4K60 capture card? Wouldn't be a proper streaming PC without one. Learn more by clicking the link below. Obviously, uh, this goes without saying, take everything that you're about to see here released from AMD directly with a huge heap of salt. I tell you this with every major company out there, Nvidia, Intel, AMD, it doesn't matter. Uh, they're all going to try to make their products look as good as possible without being dishonest. Uh, so there are going to be a few technicalities, a few uh, noteworthy changes in how things were tested in order to make their products look the best, a lot of them to be presented in the best light, so to speak. Uh, and this is not just an AMD thing. This obviously, again, uh, is something that Team Blue has done, Team Green as well. So to start off, if you notice that this chart here, at the bottom right, it says Rage Mode and Smart Access Memory were both enabled. Now, if I recall correctly from the keynote, the same place from which this graph was derived, AMD said that Smart Access Memory requires a 5000 series Zen 3 CPU, which means that this is only gonna work under a very particular set of circumstances. And they did note as well that Smart Access Memory is something that should give you a, a decent little bump in games, but it still needs to be optimized in most titles. Either way you slice it though, Forza Horizon 4, the 6900 XT apparently is pulling a nice healthy lead in 4K Ultra over the 3090, which is, mind you, a more expensive card. Call of Duty Modern Warfare, it's a game I played quite a bit. That's actually uh, an AMD favored title, at least in this case here, uh, Battlefield 5 as well. Uh, Divisions 2, there are a couple exceptions, Resident Evil 3, Shadow of the Tomb Raider looks like they're trading blows at around 96 FPS. Uh, so again, they're not going to show you every detail, especially with a chart like this. We don't know specifically what settings were enabled, which settings weren't enabled. We don't know what the exact test bed looks like. Maybe they showed it earlier. I, I'm just been looking at the the uh, frame rate comparisons here. Uh, and I'm assuming this is average frame rate. This would be the, the thing that most people would expect to see from a company like AMD. Uh, but I, nonetheless, I'm excited because there seems to be direct competition with Nvidia's best and we haven't had that in God knows how long. So the price here, RX 6900 XT is gonna come in at 999 bucks which is a noticeable drop down uh, from the RTX 3090, from which, which this card directly competes, apparently. Uh, I am interested in how the differences in power draw uh, will compare between the two cards, because it seems like on paper, the 6900 XT will consume less power, just clock for clock, but when you enable rage mode and you enable smart access memory, I mean, how far can you really go here? This is something Dr. Ian Cutras on Twitter pointed out as well. Uh, and we're not sure if these cards were overclocked or not. What were they, I mean, what specifically are we looking at here? So those are the, the, the fine details that are not being revealed purposefully, which is, this is a normal marketing tactic, uh, but you have to keep that stuff in mind. And that's why I said at the beginning, huge heap of salt folks. Now the next big thing, obviously is the RX 6800 XT, which is the uh, cheaper, uh, it's a more affordable, but also weaker card. Now weaker, I'm saying that relatively with respect to the 6900 XT, yeah, it's a weaker card, but it still trades blows apparently with the RTX 3080. I'm really surprised All across the board. I had, I, I really didn't have high hopes for these cards in the sense that I didn't think we'd have stuff competing with the best from Nvidia. This shows me though, I mean, this explains why Nvidia was so quick to aggressively price their cards out of the gate. I think they knew. I think they had some inside information. Maybe somebody was communicating between the companies and they kind of knew what to expect from AMD before their launch. And so they said, you know what, we're going to go ahead and undercut prices up front. That, that says a lot. I think I talked about this in my NVIDIA preliminary video when they announced those cards. But uh, 6800 XT, that's a, that's a good looking card. So with the 6800 XT, you're gonna get a 72 compute unit GPU. It's 128 megabyte infinity cache, which they're saying is gonna be a game changer. And then 16 gigs of GDDR6. Interesting, they're going for 16 there. This is something that we expected uh, based on the leaks we we're seeing from, from several outlets, including video cards. And uh, 16, I think is going to be, that's gonna be a compelling uh, force for, for, for many people who are 
kind of timid about buying a card as powerful as the RTX 3080, but with only 10 gigs of VRAM. Uh, I'm not sure, they're not worried, at, I don't think about the speed of the memory. I mean, GDDR6X versus GDDR6 versus GDDR5, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, past a certain point, you don't want that memory to be a bottleneck. It traditionally hasn't been. I can't recall a card where memory specifically or the memory bandwidth has been a bottleneck. Uh, usually that is just left wide open. There's plenty of room to spare there. Uh, but 16 gigs, I mean, the, the capacity, the buffer size uh, is pretty pretty sweet. And for the price, what, 650 bucks or thereabouts, uh, this is going to be awfully compelling. This is going to, it's going to definitely cause people to, I think, question their purchasing decision. I think they're going to struggle just a bit at least between choosing an RTX 3080 and a 6800 XT. And I think that was the point. Again, we talked about this at CES back in uh, earlier this year, right before all the health stuff happened. But uh, I asked the, the radon division specifically why they don't bother undercutting competitor pricing, kind of like they do with, with the CP market. Again, it's kind of an unfair question because they're two totally different markets. Uh, but the, the reason why, they straight up told me, they're like, we don't need to. We feel like we're already competitive enough. We don't need to be even more competitive than this. We just want to be a viable alternative. That's in a nutshell what they told me. And th this, this makes sense. I mean, this goes right along with what they told me because this card is not a significantly better value than the RTX 3080. And I think that's why some people on Twitter are upset, but that's the point. They don't want something that is just like gonna fly off the shelf super fast because everyone wants that instead of the green team counterpart. This is something that is going to make the decision a bit harder for people. And that's all they wanted. Same thing with the RX 6800, the non-XT variant. Uh, these cards seem to be great at 4K excellent in 1440p, very high frame rates. We're talking over 100, sometimes even over 200 FPS in 1440p with very higher ultra settings, again, according to AMD. And at the same time, we expect the 6800 XT to consume less power than the 3080. So a more efficient process as well. Jesus. You know, I keep telling myself this at the end of the day, this is supposed to look enticing. This is supposed to look juicy for people like myself, people like you who are interested in the, the next great thing, something else to sink six or 700 bucks into. This presentation, the goal of this, was supposed to drive hype and enthusiasm, get you excited for whenever these cards are released. I think it's in, uh, what, middle December sometime? I oh, know, middle of November for the 6800 XT. Uh, so yeah, November 18th is what they're saying there. I'm assuming they're not going to push that back. Uh, but the other big if uh, is whether or not they're going to have enough supply, uh, which has been something that's been just crippling NVIDIA as of late. It, it's it's so discouraging that I don't even want to release reviews of AIB cards that I'm getting from, from Gigabyte and elsewhere. Um, people are just like, yeah, this is a cool review, cool video, but I can't buy it. So what's the point? I get that, I do. So what do you guys think about this in the comments below? I'm curious, uh, th this was super exciting. I was more excited about this, watching this live stream than I was watching the NVIDIA live stream, just being blunt with you guys. I, I tend to choose NVIDIA cards for my personal rigs because I use Premiere Pro a lot. CUDA acceleration is a huge help in Adobe Premiere. Uh, and uh, that on top of the fact that I just, I use Shadowplay quite a bit. Um, I, I'm just a little bit more familiar with GeForce experience. Uh, those tend to be the reasons why I would choose an NVIDIA card over an AMD one. Also, yeah, this the, the, the more stable drivers, historically speaking. Uh, but I, I gotta say, uh, I'm awfully intrigued here. And because I didn't expect them to, to release something that could compete with the best from NVIDIA, um, I'm, I'm even more intrigued. I really wanna get my hands on that 6900 XT and see if it lives up to the hype. There's a lot of hype around this card and I understand why. So if you haven't already clicked that like button, I would appreciate it if you did that right now and uh, consider clicking the subscribe button if you haven't already. The bell notification icon is there. If you wanna get notified when videos like these go live, I would appreciate that as well. And uh, that's about all for this one. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.